Uh, thank you, Rakuten and uh, Junior Dev SG, uh, giving me a chance to talk here I mean, regarding my passion about Vim. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this, this okay. I will, I will go first, and then uh, Li Ping will uh will come after me, and then then we will conclude, and then maybe if time allows that, then we can do some demo if you want to uh, see it. Uh, may I know how many people are using Vim or started to use Vim? Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, like it's a current. Hello, hello, hello. Currently using, right? I assume. So okay, but still, uh, I would say uh, thirty percent of our attendance. Okay, uh, I try to consolidate consolidate my thought because I, I think we have so many things to share about Wims when we talk about our passion. So I try to follow my own slide if I'm possible to. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I will go for the second one. Okay, who am I? First of all, I say I actually introduce myself. <laughs> hey, wait, ah, yeah. Okay, my name is Ken. I'm from uh, GovTech, as you can see. Yeah, that's my email and then my profile. It doesn't matter, actually. Um, of course, uh, there's this disclaimer that actually anything that above, below that I'm talking actually is my own personal view, not representing any organization or any, any parties. Okay. Hello. What's the game? Okay, Vim is an educator. Okay, uh, we, we kind of know it. But it's, for me, it's literally really uh, uh, it's an editor, just like your Notepad++, plus plus, just like your Visual Studio, but without all the plugins and all these things. Just like um, um, Nano, if you are using. So, I, even though it's uh, just an editor, but uh, why people like, still obsessed about it then uh, i'll show you a bit uh, why i am one of the the, the person that also obsessed with the, then after i have been um, have been encountered with this okay I'm, so why we because uh, i believe it, everyone mostly is uh, all deaf right so as a deaf inside our uh, our heart there's uh, like a geek inside it we want to learn something, we want to learn something cool. We learn it and then we want to show it. Right? That's mainly for okay, why it? Uh, it's mainly for showing off. Uh. <laughs> so but my showing off is not the bad way of showing off. Uh. What I mean is like we just want to show what we know, what we knew, what we learned, and, and how our setup. Just like you are tuning a car. So you you slowly tune it and then up up to a point that you want to say, okay, oh, this is my car is on my best shape. I want to show to other people, right? You want to run on the street and then boom, boom, and you cut all your absorber and then make it louder, right? So that's, that's, that's the same, same kind of uh, feeling. So why Vim again? Okay. For me, it gives me the, the zone out kind of uh, um, feeling. Like when you do a coding like without um distraction, because when we see um we maybe uh, okay just example Visual Studio you have a lot of the ding ding dong dong around the area you have a lot of mini map you have uh, a lot of icons everywhere so sometimes I think that it's too much for me so and more importantly it's not also not about all the icons and things except for the distracting. I'm actually buying the Vim philosophy, but I don't know if anyone actually knew or heard about the anon anonymous. Is anon the the example of what Vim philosophy is? It's like it's like an artist when you are drawing a painting kind of things. It's like you most likely you will know that Vim is like a modal uh, modal how to say modal system. Which like you you are switching from normal mode into an instant mode into a X mode, command mode, visual mode, whatever mode you have. It's, it's like a different state of when you are crafting. So the philosophy is about, oh, I'm drawing a painting. Most of the time, I'm not editing. Most of the time, you are not, you are not drawing the thing. Most of the time, you 
think you are thinking. You think, okay, what should I do? Ah, I should move the code from here to here, and I'm going to delete two words, add three words, kind of thing. I'm not like always in the insert mode, and then pa 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 pa. Everything automatically will 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 be switch switch. It will not like that, right? So the idea is like, I think of it. I want to insert. I put one step. I draw. I come out and think again. I want to do something. I go in. I draw again. So that's the idea of uh, how we relate. Uh, they 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 make an example for it. So yeah, little did I know that actually, after I jump into the journey to for converting, uh, there is no turning back because you would not let go what you set up. You will not let go. Actually, most of the time that they have this uh, funny memes that say that the the learning curve of BIM is like like a wall. But actually, if you climb over the wall, you most likely cannot come back as well. That's why, right? So you will not let go. Okay, my journey to BIM is like I started using BIM two zero one eight around that area. So I six this this might be the six years. Right? Actually, I'm still young, but in BIM world, you never grow old. You always learn, always new thing. Right? You always find that in the Reddit of a BIM, everything you have something new. You it's an ever learning journey. I would say it's just like um, um, not like the journey that's a very bad journey. It's like a when you are going to a nirvana like that. You are like journey to journey to the west, like Mount Mount Monkey King like that. It's good one. Right? It's it's fun. I would say. <laughs> I was, I was an avid web storm, web stormer. Like Jet Brains one, I believe their products are really good lah. But I also using IntelliJ one for Java. No, not everything be my okay. So, I I think they they really put a lot of thought in 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 their products. So actually, I'm really productive using WebSong six years ago. So I would not let go easily for what I already built up my memory muscle my muscle memory. So in order for me to give up and try something new, there are I need to figure out first what what my plan, my my as in my daily workflow could actually be provide me. So there there are some cornerstone that I need to uh, make sure that is set before I really jump into the hole. So I will finding one by one. First of all, I need to. Lah, able to right. Uh, if I can you know, type in, then can lah. There's a um, have to be ease when you are typing. Second one is oh shoot, no way. Oh, I say <laughs> beep. Okay, second one is in file navigation. I am uh, like a visual guy a bit on my file structure, especially for um, I would say a new code base that you never hit before. I want to see the structure. How was it? So actually, I need the drawer. So somewhat a navigation of files also is what of what what we I need because sometimes you will be jumping three four files uh on and off each other so I, in WebStorm I will use a uh, tab so actually it's quite easy to like a command or control one control two control three I can swap it right? but uh, I need that thing the third one is of course search and replace there's a strict there. Yeah. Search and replace is for my usage is like I most likely need to maybe reflect refactor arguments. They are in the scope. They are not like I don't need to like replace the whole code base with a certain word. There are no such a there are no such a use case for me. But there might be for some other. Everyone's uh, knowledge, knowledge might be might be different. Uh. So that's what I my search and replace. Oops. Okay, and then of course the third one is the source control. If you can give you some um, some basic pull push and diff, that will be good enough. That's my cornerstone. Uh, between uh, I need these four things. Okay, first thing: typing coding with it. Uh, actually, I think I should just tap all the way. If not, then I also don't know where am I. Uh, okay, okay, never mind. Never mind the buttons. Okay, uh, first of all, 
first thing about Wim is that you heard they will say that you don't need the mouse anymore. Yeah, that's what actually told it to me. I say, hey, you don't need mouse. Oh, okay, you can save $10 for my mouse. <laughs> it's good, right? Hey, you got, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, actually the mouse is very unhealthy for your capitano hand, okay? Actually, I do have a friend that really get a uh, um, um, switch to win because they really don't want to use a mouse for capitano. Okay. But I need to know, but I know that I, I need to learn all the strokes, right? I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll show you later. Uh, I think Max, uh, uh, leaving later, we show you uh, a bit of what are the strokes, basically the painting strokes, I would say. And then, of course, uh, there are some mappings that we need to do um, for typing, ease of typing. So you will have basics, you will have more advanced um, mapping. But along the way, it's a journey, right? It, it won't end. So actually, today you learn some mapping that is uh, very basic, but tomorrow you need you have a spe specific usage for your particular macro. Then you to map those things. Then you 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 will you will de develop your own customized development environment. So everyone is different. There's a good and bad for this, uh, So it should, of course, which means when you're doing pairing, uh, your friend cannot use your machine, uh. <laughs> So yeah, so there are a few plugins that um I at, hello and I'm using currently. Uh, ignore all these things because if you if you come back to this slide, if you are still keen, then you will know what am I talking. Else, you don't need to, because uh, I just mentioned here because um they are my daily driver kind of. I have some autocomplete. I believe that is uh, built uh, out of the box from uh, all the current new modern editors, like autocomplete, all these things. But for Wim, it's not. So actually, you need to extend it. And then for some syntaxing, syntax highlighting uh, is not very useful for me, but I could understand why there are benefits for some developers. But I still do some of them. And then uh, some spell check for, because I'm a type 4 master, so I always type 4. So I need uh, some spell check for myself, just to not annoy my fellow deaf. Okay, there are other, other things uh, for ease of typing. So, okay, next one. Okay, project farm navigation. Uh, okay, let me go through. Okay, they are also quite straightforward. Uh. I have to be able to jump from current file to the previous file, back to the current file, at least in order I can perform my daily work efficiently. And then of course, need the drawer and a quick file name searching, like a fuzzy file that I can just anyhow type anything, then it will appear and then let me select. Okay, I need this thing. And then, okay, if you know that uh, there are a lot of oh, a lot of bad names about the tree. They are bloated kind of thing, but uh, I cannot get rid of it. I'm still using it. It's a project drawer that you show a list of files, nothing fancy, just files. And then some um, fuzzy find for the control, control P, just like your control P. Your control P, you can just type anything and then you in. And then, hello, hello. And then, of course, the Tmux. Tmux is not a Vim thing. If anyone already kind of heard of it, Tmux is a it's a multiplexer. It's like you just have an item, you can open it off a term, terminal of it. So they are all in one. So actually, I use the Tmux for basically combine these two things. And then I have the, nav Hello. I have the navigator of the Tmux between, bridge between Win and Tmux. That's a, that's a basic. Uh, search and replace. As what I mentioned, I don't need uh, a lot of um, whole code base search and place. Most likely, no need. But it must be fast enough. So maybe later we can show a bit of the searching kind of thing. But I, I am kind of uh, happy with the speed up. So okay, recently, I changed from AG, a silver searcher, to uh, rip grab. Yeah. Because of uh, I'm just by and two weeks ago i switched from beam to end beam so it's kind of like um because i i think it's a, a bit slow in vim recently i don't know why 
so I switched to Mim. Mim is a is kind of like a rewrite, rewritten uh, Vim, but in Lua. So the wait, wait. Can I go back? Oh, that's all. Um, yeah, okay. Hopefully, it will not result in too much rubbish uh, if I do search, right? Because sometimes if you search, right, if it's too powerful, uh, you search all your node module. So you also don't want that to happen. Um, yeah. So next one, oh, sorry, the kind of last one. Uh, source control, of course. Uh, I believe uh, Git is in everyone's heart. Uh -huh. I don't think anyone is still using SVN. Uh -huh. Using SVN, go out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyhow, say, never mind. Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. My, I, I was using SVN, okay. My, <laughs> but you know, some, some years ago, yeah. But I think, yeah, they able to, okay. Able to push, pull, stash, status, thief is main, main, mainly enough suffice for my daily work. So I don't need those like a con, um, complicated kind of a, a, a mechanism. If I need, I will most likely use the UI. So yeah, I like uh, Git, Kraken, Quark, uh, what else, other thing. Okay, uh, there are a few things that I can um, I can introduce if you're still coming back for the plugins and all this thing. They are, uh, like say, normally you will be uh, Visual Studio, you will see that when you highlight the line, they will have this, uh, who is the last guy that will actually edit this line, kind of, uh, um, kind of like extra thing, but I would not set them up. I will only look them up if I want to. So it's, uh, yeah. Okay, of course, BIM is all very good. But of course, it has it a limitation. Now. So there are a few limitations that I find it quite annoyed uh, most of the time. But as why I have said, I already know the impact already. So <laughs> I have to eat the limitation also. <laughs> hey, wait. What is it? Ah, okay, okay. I, I didn't set the animation for this place. Eh? Okay, search and replace for weird weird characters is a bit hard in Vim because I think that natively they will search using regular expression. I don't know how we are you going to search weird character with expansion. You need a bunch of escape keys and all this thing. Uh, recently, recently, I tried to um, modify and set up a little bit if I could actually use the, uh, the regret to search fixed strings, which is without regular expression, try to search the literal, literal string. Yeah, I think it's kind of working. So I'm quite happy. And copy and paste issue for if you know that uh, it's very hard for copy and paste from Beam terminal into somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, in your host machine. Then it's a bit, especially if you're using Windows subsystem. Uh, it's okay. Now, now actually, if I'm using MD, it's considered uh, easier already. So actually, yeah, you can just use Clip ESE to, to run. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> Beep. Sorry, beep. <laughs> okay, okay. Find it, find it. I believe you can edit it. Oh uh, yeah, limitation is a uh, uh, visually uh, compare. If you want to take this tank and then you want to put it into your uh, your mesh conflicts and all this thing, especially if you have a, a long farm that you are doing a lot of this thing, then you you most likely you want to use the UI for that. Okay, uh, demo, I think I will put it under, after uh, Max um, leaving uh, uh, perform, uh, presently. Okay, I'm done. Basically, after the demo, I think, eh, wait, uh, I will show you a bit of uh, um, happiness. <laughs> happiness of what why would I show a bit. So I will just show our daily workspace and what I'm doing, how am I navigating in and out of this thing. Yeah, kind of. Thank you. Okay, hi, hi guys. Um, 
thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to do some uh, introduction to Vim and how does the Vim motion work. And I'm going to start my uh, Vim. Uh, it's very easy to install Vim. I think it's a bot uh, for all the platforms. Uh, but the easiest to install, I probably use Brew. Um, if you are on Linux, uh, probably you use uh, Add Image because uh, sometimes I work in remote uh, and in remote environment, it's better to use Add Image for Linux and it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, let me put up the Vim editor. So, um, Okay, this is my uh, environment. Usually I use uh, uh, terminal only. And um, yeah, so let me put up the Vim first. Uh, it's pretty easy to start with Vim. We just type Vim. Right. And um, let me load up some files so that I can go through all the motions that the, that, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's go through. Oh, okay. So it's very difficult to use mic with uh, mouse. Okay. Oh, you hope for me. Wow, oh, thanks, thanks. Okay, so um, is this is how you put up uh, Vim. You just write Vim, and um, most of um, a lot of people start with Vim and they don't know how to close Vim. They can't exit, and and that is a huge um problem for for the developers. And uh, how you quit is by t just typing a uh, column here and Q, or you can quit all the files by QA, or if you want to save, you type W. So um, that's how you do it. So let me quit for you and then just put up again and then load some files. Let's say uh, task model dot race. Okay. Um, so uh, let me go through the motions here, uh, which I, oops. Um, let's start with the basic motions. Um, Vim use, um, you can still use uh, up, down, left, right keyboards. Uh, yep. Right, so you still can use the um, navigation keys, um, up, down, left, right. But uh, once you start with uh, your right hand holding on H, J, K, L, and if you, it, most of the time, your hand don't want to leave the main keys too far away from, from it. Because it strain your hand, you know, moving around, especially when you hold a mouse and, and so on. So, um, so the the basic keys are H, J, K, L, which is um, let me show you. So you always want to hold it on here, which is uh, J, K, which is up and down. If you can see up and down here, right? So you can down fast and up very fast, and left, right with uh, H and L. Um, it's I'll say it's difficult to get stuck, but uh, once you get used to it uh, with the muscle memory and, and slowly you will be, um, you will never leave this key away, right? And um, yeah, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, H for left and L for right, J for down, K for up. Um, the, um, the most important things that you want to do is that when you look at Vim, there's two modes that is uh, pretty important. There's a um, normal mode and then there's an insert mode. And um, you always want to keep your keys in, uh, I mean, your, your, your uh, 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 what's that called? Your, your mode in normal mode. You, most of the time, you don't want to do insert mode. You don't want to touch any uh, change. You don't want to change anything. And, and 
Motion mode is where you move around, navigate around the beam, and, and it's actually pretty important. And so if you guys can see my screen here on the bottom left, which is normal mode, and that allows you to navigate around. And if it's insert mode, you can see that now it's insert mode, which I press the key I, uh, and you can escape by pressing escape key. So I, I have a catalog key, which is X escape, and you, you go back to normal mode. So use I for insert or use A to insert too. So I is insert inside. A is insert uh, on, on the right side or on the, yeah, on the right side. Um, of course, you want to move around the words, for example. Uh, so let's say you, again, you are in the normal mode. You want to uh, jump from a word to a word uh, by pressing W. W, which means words. Uh, do mind that uh, uh, Vim is a programmable uh, um, editor, which means every keys that they use has its own meaning. So just now we talk about I, A, and I is for insert, and, and, and now we are talking about uh, W, jumping by W, which is word. And of course, you can jump by E. E is like the end of the word. So, and, and now I'm pressing B to go back to the previous uh, keys that I pressed, uh, previous words that I, that I actually pressed. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, later probably I, I will send you guys this uh, document, uh, share with you and, and you can you know, have a good overview of all this. Um, so uh, of course there are um, many, um, motions keys. So let's start with those um, uh, um, concepts of um, jumping around um, keys. Just now we talk about word. Let's let's say we jump one word. So one key is one word, right? One one time. But you can jump multiple times. So it's the uh, the reason that I say is programmable because it works like a function. So you tell the um, Vim to to jump around, let's say I want to jump around five words, so I just, just type five W and you just jump five times, right? So, and that's how you navigate. It's the same as going up and down. So if you want to go down for five times, let's say now you go down for five times, so you just type five and down. So that's um, uh, the meaning of uh, motions. So it's programmable because it, uh, it, you can instruct it to do whatever you want to do. So you can even say five, um, words go inside. So five I, uh, five I, <laughs> right? So um, of course um, there is, there are some keys that is, uh, you can take note with, which is like uh, you want to go back to the top, which is called G G G G, G. <laughs> go back, and then of course uh, G capital G goes down to the bottom last line. Yeah, exactly. So and um, there are some additional keys that allow you to nav jump quickly or navigate around very fast, which is like H, you can press um, H is at um, top, and then M for middle, and then you, you have low at bottom, L, which is L key. So all these keys are pretty uh, straightforward. It's just that uh, um, uh, it has all meaning, it's just that uh, once you get used to the motion, um, I mean the memories of your muscle, then uh, you will get used to it and, and so on. Um, there are some uh, key maps that is um, um, pretty, I would say pretty um, useful. For example, uh, let's say if I have an error in, um, in my uh, language here, let's say if I type, so you can see on the left, there's an error message showing that on the line around line 12 and 13. So uh, sometimes you, you forget about it. You can jump quickly by pressing uh, bracket and go. So it will jump back to the error uh, location and then you can just edit uh, quickly. Um, yeah, this, I guess that's the motion. I'll send you guys this uh, 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 document that I asked ChatGPT to write one. <laughs> so, 
Okay, uh, sorry, I, I have not introduced myself. Uh, I'm a front end developer at HREF. Uh, yeah, it's been there for about nine years. Um, so most of, most of the time you are writing in a language called OCaml and uh, Reason ML as front end. Um, so I started with uh, those traditional tools like Atom and then Redstorm. IntelliJ basically, and then move to VS uh, Code, and then to NeoVim. Um, by the way, NeoVim is uh, the same as uh, Vim, just that uh, uh, NeoVim preset some um, settings for you uh, once you install, so that you can get stuck quickly. And NeoVim is uh, written in Lua, which is much much faster than the traditional uh, Vim, and it. Uh, it's more easy for you to program, which means you can write plugins, you can map whatever keys you want um, uh, with, with uh, Lua, Lua language, which is probably easier than the, the Vim script itself. So um, at, at first, I was hesitant to switch to, you know, with the um, Vim navigation without using the mouse and then all this terrible, right? Because we are used to the, you know, VS Code style, uh, you know, copy, this copy paste, right? But um, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to learn Vim at, at the beginning. Uh, and Kang was actually the one that uh, forced me to, to uh, get not forced, but it's kind of like uh, push me forward to Vim. And and uh, and yeah, so and that's how I got it. So I, I started with Vim in VS Code. Um, you know, install a, a Vim in VS Code, and then, uh, but then you start to realize that it's very slow. It's slow. It's it's, it's it's complicated with all the missing of keys and mouse. And then um, my hand become you know at least you know, there's there's a bone that bounces up because you use too much. I, I pressed too hard on the key, yes. Uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> maybe. Because uh, recently I, I read an article like uh, you're su supposed to be floating on the keys, you know, your your, thing, your hands, and, uh, what's that called? Um, Ways shouldn't be holding on the table. You should be floating. I, I don't know how you guys type. So I, uh, I, I pressed too much on the table. <laughs> and yeah, it's, 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 it's not very nice. And then, and every, Day I was like uh, hearing voices from Ken, Vim, Vim, Vim. So okay, so let's just go to Vim and 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 leave all the VS Code uh, uh, away because VS Code is pretty slow and Vim and there's a missing of. For example, if, if you want to copy um, some um, uh, words, right? Um, in Vim or uh, I mean in VS Code, usually just uh, drag your mouse, <coughs> highlight the keys. I like the words and then control C, right? Command C, super C, or whatever to, to copy and paste. But then uh, it's too complicated because, like I said, you don't want to move too far away from your these few keys, right? Because it's, it's, it's painful. It's strange your hand. Um, yeah. So there are a few um, plugins that I uh, can't leave. Without it, uh, Git, um, what's, what, how, how do I pronounce this? Uh, Fugitive, right? Um, it's one of the most important um, Git plugins. Um, and just now, Cam mentioned that uh, he has problem with um, uh, um, what's that merging with um, uh, Git. But uh, Git Fugitive actually has a to uh, has a has a function called um, Git split, uh, three way splitting. So it is actually very very powerful, and and it's very lightweight. I, I think. <coughs> and uh, other tools like uh, COC Vim, which uh, probably I'll, I'll do a demo in, in in later. And 
uh, COC Explorer, which is the file structures, like uh, your VS Code, you have the files and and on the left screen and, and so on. Telescope is where I search for files and uh, Telescope is actually, um, the, the good thing is that uh, it um, excludes all the, let's say if you have an environment that um, has a git uh, in all, and all the, in, in all, it reads the in all file, and then it ignores all the uh, redundant files, and, and you just search for whatever that's supposed to be searched. But uh, you can still include it if you want to, right? So I, I use, uh, recently I replaced with some <coughs> LSP to uh, Mason. Mason is pretty, uh, pretty cool. It, it helps you um, install any LSP um, and update uh, pretty, pretty straightforward and fast. Uh, most of the time, I'm doing remote editing, and uh, which means uh, my my environment is in the remote. Let Let's take um, uh, AWS server for example. So I don't most of the time I don't use my own uh, PC or on my uh, own laptop to to do all the work because it's it's very slow. Um, you know, uh, the remote server has a better built uh, uh, system than your your PC. And of course, there's um, things like TMAX has been used like forever. And TMAX work very well on the remote because um, you don't need to uh, leave away from, from the environment, the, the session. Uh, if you close your computer, it will still be there. So you just go back to your remote environment and then uh, TMAX back to whatever you have been uh, left over. Um, maybe Ken can do a demo first, then uh, I'll probably um, follow up with my environment on, on uh, all the things that I've been using and, you know, all this. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can you can use use that. <laughs> because I don't think it has like, maybe you know. <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool. I need to share my screen. Okay, I will just share everything. I don't know if I could uh show you, but it's a bit like uh I make it huge, hopefully. Okay, huge enough. Yeah, that's my max already. Uh, hello, 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 hello. Okay. Uh, uh, this is me. Uh, yeah, this is my um, boring terminal. It's uh, it's Tmax. It's inside Tmax. Actually, I might not need this uh, mic. Uh, it's uh one of the workspace that I'm currently working. You can see that that's for Meetup. So on the right hand side is my Meetup. So actually, uh, normally uh, I will be open up all the projects that I have on the below. So I will just switch between them. So let's say I'm working on a Jira issue. I will be uh, like that. Oops, I'll be slow, sorry, let's, say. let's say I'm working on my color scheme. Then I have my uh, two tab here. Then I have uh, other thing. I have my, let's say I'm working on my feature. Then under mom, uh, I'm from mom. So, I say. so let's say um, I should look at here. Yeah, let's say I'm working on the feature like uh, eight, six, five things. Then I have like, a few things. So actually, I, I group my space like um, like a whole. Then I, I don't need to jump. Because of one repo could actually under multiple. Um, Edit set. Yeah, I see. Oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah, I try my best. Uh, yeah, I, I maybe I quickly show you my um, uh, normal uh, way uh, of working. Let's say I go to the... I just download this uh, view create app. I don't know if it works, but I try my best. Okay. So actually, whenever, every time I go into repo, I will see all the previous using uh, files that I have. This good one, one of the plugins that I'm using. So actually, I will go back to uh, what previously I opened. So actually, let's say I go to this spec, right? I saw that, um, I go to the, the spec file, the test file, right? Then I can see it uh, uh, directly. So actually, uh, as what I mentioned there, uh, let's say I go, uh, this is drawer, drawer, I, I, I need it. I don't know why, but yeah. Okay, and then I, I will see some um, some other file. And then I want to go back to uh, my previous file. So I can just jump, go back to my previous file. And then I can go in, go forward like that. So actually, Vim gives you a very um, intuitive uh, kind of... Um, way to toggle between buffer they call it files as a buffer so actually you are like uh you are you are you are going control o is to go out control i is to go in so actually you go in go in you can keep going in and then you can keep going out basically like a recursive stack like that so you go in go in, go in then you can revert re re back so you can, you can keep jumping inside a reference go into the function then go into other place then you can go back to where you you begin with so that's one of the way then second one is uh, I try this uh, Vim, this literally the Vim source code that uh, I pull out from the GitHub one. So actually, I I, I try this uh, this file, right? and then uh, normally my search right would be uh, like that. I have an underlying quick link to search. Let's say in the Vim repo, uh, most likely if I search Vim, uh, then most likely a lot uh, I assume that uh, a lot. Okay, let's try. Okay, I enter and then I see the result. The, see the result actually is fifty k of Vim found. The word found actually, I believe that is fast enough for me. Uh. So actually, I, I think it is good because uh, some, I don't need to replace them, but most likely I want to look for them. Right? So actually, if I search through um, a code base that have a lot of similar words, right, I want them to gather in one place so I can I can I can sort through this kind of thing. So normally, what I, after I search, I most likely want to filter because of fifty k. I don't want to I don't want to see fifteen k result. Okay, so normally I will use another uh, button to say, oh, I just want to keep. Uh, all the file that with uh, TSC, then it will reduce it back to like twenty k. Then I slowly filter. Then I know that what what's the what is, what's the what's up until a filter point that I want to. Then I can just go into a file and do my editing. That's my normal uh way to do this thing. So yes, and then because our current structure is like I have a project folder inside my project folder we are running my um, a lot of um mono repo. They are like. So far, I think around it's like 130 repo inside. So actually, if I want to search a whole entire thing, I could, and it's fast. So actually, uh, that's one of the good things uh, oh, oh, uh, I'm using. And then uh, I already showed you the Tmax uh, thing. Uh, and then the other one is uh, version control. Uh, I believe this one have a version control, okay? I didn't change anything else, but uh, let's say I go back to the one that I have. Okay, this one. Uh, this guy is a test file. Normally, uh, like uh, just uh, Tammy mentioned regarding testing, we do a lot of uh, unit testing. So actually, we also want it to be fast to, to test, right? So actually, when I write a test inside here, I normally open a test and then on that particular uh, that test itself. So actually, I know that at least that test will not fail. So when I'm working with it, I just want to focus on that set, that test. So yeah, I could, right? Normally for JavaScript, right, you can just like focus on F, this guy, and then you can just focus it. Also can. Uh, uh, just a different workflow. So and then other thing is like um uh autocomplete, right? Autocomplete I have eight like that. I also have autocomplete. Uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> so normally I will use autocomplete for um for especially the console because we type console like uh, day day in and day out. So like console, uh, I have a own console. So actually this is a pulling from okay, what's the file that you're currently in? And then you just need to give it the variable that you want to print. So that's a kind of like a quick way to, to do all the snippet and auto complete. And that's for testing uh, and, and navigation. And then, yeah. And then the other one is, uh, okay, uh, just give me one moment and then I try to add something. Okay, let's say I add this one. Then normally if I add it in, I will have, oh, this is not a good report. Oh, I say, I, I put it, I just create the, I think I could try the, okay, I'm in here. Then let's say I change something. I don't know what I change. Uh, I save it. Then I look at it. Oh, then I see uh, there's a file change, right? So actually, I can look at it. 
what is the diff between uh, left and right. So like just now mentioned, uh, uh, Max mentioned that actually there are, there are three-way split. It's when I try to resolve, then we open up a three-way split. But that one, I think it's hard to test. It's hard to try now because I need to change something, I need to pull something, and then it will create the Okay, But roughly, you know the idea. It's like, okay, I see the, I see the left hand side, I see the right hand side. Then actually, if I don't want, actually, they, they are grouped by hung. So actually, you know that uh, uh, you, this hung currently is, has a uh, from nothing to have something. So if I don't want it, right, uh, I just say to uh, uh, take it from the other side. So I take it on my side. So I just revert back to the, to the thing. Uh, it's just like that. Then I can save it and then I can stage it. So if it is an individual hunk, I still can do uh, manipulation. So you see that, uh, okay, this one actually I can open up. Uh, what is the changes that I, or I added in this thing? I can add a line and then I stage it. I only stage that bit. You will see, okay, let me try. Uh, let me try to edit two places. Most I did far enough. Then I will look into it. Then just now the one that I stage. It's under the stage. The not stage is still not stage. Huh? Then I can only commit the one that I want to. So actually, you can look at uh, which one. Is. I believe that um, for source tree, all these things, you can do this kind of thing. You can even uh, click on it or uh, which one you use to select. It, it's still the same, basically. It's just a different workflow. And then the other one is, um, yeah, editing. Okay. Editing for Wim, actually, I would, I would say that because uh, they are so so many ways to achieve certain things. I for block for a block of changes, right? Normally I would use uh, still, I still use the the, the visual because uh, I found that this uh, this visual is uh, helped me a lot because when I'm doing pairing right at least I know that if I'm doing remote they can see what am I doing. Instead of because Vim can let you do a certain block of thing without you even seeing the cursor moving. So we, I might not know because I want to say that oh I want to change in the block. I just see IB, then I can change the block, but people will not know. So I need to literally highlight it. I say ah I change the block, ah, then I see I can change it. So they, they would actually at least have a visual cue that oh okay, you are changing the block. Instead of you they don't know what you're doing. So yeah, that's it. And then uh, I have some key mapping, I'll say. Uh oh no, okay, it, it's a default one. Actually, you can jump down a certain uh, page quickly or jump up a certain page quickly. So I don't, I seldom use the, the motion, I'll say, because every time you want to, you want to, you want to count, it's very taxing for me. Let's say I want to jump five words, then I do five W. It's a bit too much. So, you, so I will just use uh, left one. Like that. I still press because it, it's not an arrow key, it's still a hash IJK. I mean, HJK, I'll show you. But I make the repeat faster, so on my system. So I would just basically achieve the same thing uh, instead of uh, I www and bang 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 bang. I can now, of course, but um, that, that's not my thing. I'm not believing in um, a super purist. So as long as you find your balance, then I think it's good enough for you. I think roughly that's it. Uh, anything that you want to CC or you want to check how I do? <laughs> huh? Is it? <laughs> Actually, ac okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh let I okay. I I most likely cannot show the code. But uh, if you have any, I will try. Um, let me try. Let me try. Uh, let's say you have this mount. You know that the mount is from uh B test most likely. I don't know. I mean, uh, Actually, you can go into the library of course. But most of you don't know what they say. La. So I would not touch the library at this, this point. I only would like uh, create a new repo for, just for that purpose. And then you can just jump up back. You can jump over and jump back. Okay. Um, default, there are already, already some omni function that you can auto complete, but there are always extensions that you want to tune. So actually, because you might need to control X, control C in order to do com uh, complete, but it's a bit. Hard, I would say. Yeah, it's just like what uh, Tim, uh, uh, Max yeah, mentioning it. Actually, before this, right, I, I was using Tmax to just connect to a remote. Yes, I used the Tmax. So the, the session actually is quite good because like, 
you close your laptop, you don't need to care about the thing being closed down. When you open up, you join it back to the session. You attach it back to the session, then you can continue working. So I think that's a... Yes. Because, because they, uh, Vim and Neo Vim, the, the actually the requirement is actually quite low, I would say. So actually, you still can run it quite efficiently. Yeah, so... I am done. Cool. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, it's my time to show off my system or Vim. <clears throat> so, um, same as Max, uh, I mean, same as Ken, I have TMAX uh, booted up. Uh, as you can see, that uh, this is TMAX with the environment. I can create multiple uh, environments. So, let's say if I create a, a new one, which is um, this type. Command B C, so you can create a new TMAX um, session, which is on. You see that which is three. So now you can change the name. Um, change the name to this meetup, right? So um, of course TMAX is pretty pretty um, pretty cool. You, you like can say well, once it's uh, attached to a session. Um, if you work on uh, remote or some environments that never close your computer or never shut down your computer and, and you can just go back to your previous session. Um, so I usually split them into uh, top and bottom. So I can just do command B and uh, dash, which is split uh, uh, horizontally. And of course, you can do vertically by um command b and uh shift dash i can exit this um environment that i need uh I boot up a uh, vim uh in this project called pr token which is my own project so um i i use telescope so this is telescope the, the different Thing that I um, uh, the way that I search for files and and uh, from Kang is that uh, telescope uh, allows you to to do a search uh, in um, text or in you can, you can also uh, load a um, files. So um, and of course there are many other things like you can just uh, check out the telegram. Uh, I mean the telescope thing like. Um, Telescope. So they provide quite a lot of these, like even like um, key maps. So it allows you to uh, check uh, which key that you have bind to. For example, I have bind C C N um, in in a C O C function. So so it's uh, telescope is really really useful and it's much readable than the <laughs> traditional way of searching. And you can install it and play around. So let me load out a file and then we can uh, see how I use in my tele um, in my work environment. So I do task model. So um, as you can see, I'm, I'm writing in a language called uh, Rescript. Um, it's uh, very similar to JavaScript and, and uh, React, uh, React of um, Rescript. So there are some types. So I, I have some uh, files structure that is uh, I press space E. I bring up my uh, uh, folder, which is in this um, Vim that I open. Uh, whichever um, environment, whichever folder that you open up Vim with, uh, it will be stored in this buffer. <clears throat> um, and you can see that on top, I have a buffer uh, file name. It's called taskmodel.res. I can open up another file, let's say README, right? And then you, you can navigate around by using uh, J or K. Do mindful that this is not the tab uh, 
uh, in VS Code, uh, um, all the files that you open is just a uh, tab, uh, but uh, in, in Vim, it's, it's called buffer. So, um, you, of course, if you, can, you can check out all the buffers by using by reading buffers. There's a buffers here in 1 and 30, 39. I can exit a buffer by uh, doing BD, delete a buffer. And um, yeah, so that's uh, my environment. But uh, just now I mentioned that there are a few modes that to note that in Vim we have normal mode, but we also have a uh, visual mode. Uh, visual mode is where you want to highlight things. Uh, so let's say you want to highlight the first word, which is, which, this is, I'm not sure if you can see. Can see the highlight? Oh yeah, you can see the highlight. So this is visual mode. And there's another one called block. Visual mode is like selecting a, a, a line or, or multiple lines or whatever. So you have block modes which allow you to do uh, block selecting. Can you see that, that I'm selecting a block from, from up to down till this block? And then I can select this block. The good thing about the block editing is that you can edit multiple uh, block of the, uh, of of uh, uh, text that you want to edit. I can straight away go into insert mode by typing first character hello, and then when I escape, it will it will repeat the rest of the uh, highlighted blocks. So this is block mode, which is very very useful. Um, so there are a few plugins that I use, uh, which is um, um, just how I mentioned buffer, buffer, um, buffer line. Uh, not, not buffer, yeah, buffer, buffer, buffer line. I'll show you some plugins that I use uh, regularly, and just, um, let me go to the plugins. Yeah. And uh, one of the um, uh, git stuff that I use is called lazy git. Um, uh, I used to use a lot of uh, source tree and uh, it's actually very um, very cool. I mean, very nice because it's, uh, it's GUI. You, you can use a mouse track around, uh, you know, stash or whatever you want to do stash. But um, you 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 don't have this kind of GUI in, in uh, Terminal. So as a, as a um, uh, it's, it's not it's not just a Vim plugin, but it's also terminal uh, um, um, uh, what's it called? Terminal tools, right? So you, you can uh, let me open up the <coughs> lazy git, which is um very intuitive. You can see that on on the status, you know, you, you have all the changes that you did on first screen, and go to uh the next screen, which is your branch, and so on, and then commit. Of course, you can you can go back to go to the go insert into the changes that you did on, on this file and jump inside and so if, if you are not familiar you can just type question mark <coughs> it will bring up all the uh, keys that you can use and uh, it's, it's quite useful for, for me um, um, as, as you can see that um, I have buffer uh, line um, uh, install. So I can jump from previous buffer to the next buffer quickly by navigating in uh, uh, command J and command K. So it's, it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty fast for me and to, to go around. Um, of course, you can, if you want to open a new tab, just tap new. But this is different from buffer. Tab and buffer is very different. And, and buffer is like, uh, um, Let's say if you jump out of your Vim uh, exit, when you go back to your go back to your Vim uh, file again, uh, the buffer is still there, so you can still do like undo, do again, redo again, or whatever things that you have done before. So this is very uh, useful. Um, I um the the few things that I um uh use I, um, as pre pretty similar to can we have um, coc which let, let's say if i type something let uh, let let and then you can see that, that there's a uh, uh, autocomplete uh, showing up in 
in which is here and and, um, and of course the same as um, if you have a LSP installed it will show you the uh, the, uh, the the the, the, the uh, re reference the um, the types and all this uh, for you so um, yeah it's this is yeah, it's quite nice <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I guess that's that's about my environment that if you if you are interested we can you know explore more together so yeah okay cool cool okay okay thanks thanks yeah